record breaking price increases, food industry executives have just issued a dire warning to all Americans. Buy food now, because grocery costs will go up tremendously and things will only get worse in 2023. That's what we're going to expose in this video. And we have a lot to cover today. But before moving on, we kindly ask you to support our work with a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. In 2022, US shoppers have dealt with some of the steepest price increases seen since the hyperinflation crisis that marked the 1970s. We paid on average 20% more on meat, 40% more on eggs, 17% more on breakfast cereal, 11% more on peanut butter, 42% more on gasoline, 27% more on electricity, 32% more on propane, kerosene, and firewood, and 12% more on appliances. According to an estimate from Moody's Analytics, soaring inflation has forced American households to spend an extra $445 per month to buy the same items they did last year. And food industry executives say that conditions are gonna get even tougher in 2023. In a recent interview with Fox Business, supermarket CEO John Katsimatidis, the owner of Gristidis and D'Agostino Foods, warned that food giants such as Kraft Heinz, PepsiCo, and Mondelez will keep passing higher costs on to consumers in the next year. The executive had previously stated that double-digit price increases will affect thousands of different items, adding that the trend will not drop anytime soon. Katsimatidis noted that inflation and supply chain problems will continue to plague grocery store chains and other retailers around the United States. He said, I see food prices going up tremendously, highlighting that in the coming months, promotions will become harder to find and also revealing that food manufacturers are dropping the production of low-moving items, which will result in more empty shelves soon. The CEO's comments come just days after some major food brands, including Coca-Cola, announced a new round of price hikes for 2023. Even if overall inflation eases, food inflation is expected to remain elevated for the foreseeable future given that the challenges faced by the food industry are likely to be aggravated by even tighter supplies over the next few months. In October, the executive warned that Americans would pay the highest prices ever for turkeys and the highest price ever for Thanksgiving dinner. Given that the price per pound of turkey rose by 23%, with some whole turkeys at Walmart experiencing a 124% price increase compared to a year ago, according to a report by Business Insider, Katsimatidis forecasts have proven to be accurate. Wells Fargo analysts explained that turkey and poultry inventories collapsed after the bird flu wiped out livestock earlier this year. From here on, higher prices will become the new norm. They also cautioned that turkey, chicken, and egg supplies will become more limited due to continuing impacts of the highly pathogenic avian influenza. Katsimatidis also exposed that many food retailers are using the disruptions in supply as an excuse to charge their customers a little bit extra. Let's say they normally sell 10 million pounds of chicken. They figured if they raised the price 10 or 20 cents, some people will buy less chicken, and the people that really want to buy the chicken, it'll be there for them to buy, he said. Meanwhile, Egg Innovation CEO John Brunquell, who acquired the first U.S. patent for reduced fat and cholesterol eggs, echoed Katsimatidis' concerns that the lowest supply, coinciding with labor, freight, and vendor issues, won't be enough to meet consumers' demand. Brunquell said that his business is still filling at 100% capacity, but has asked employees to work extra hours or extra days in order to keep up with the market. If that trend continues, it's going to put us in a challenging situation with meeting the demand, he admitted. Whether it's the selectors, the drivers, the loaders, 
There are interruptions in the system, Katsimatides continued. During an interview with Fox and Friends' Brian Kilmeade, the executive urged Americans to buy now because food inflation will only get much worse. Between price increases and shrinkflation, where it used to be 32 ounces, now it's going to be 28 ounces, it's anywhere from a 12 to a 20% increase in food prices, the billionaire CEO laid out. He encouraged U.S. shoppers nationwide to stock up on their favorite products to get a better return on your investment, especially considering that prices are set to soar over the next three to four months. Katsimatides predicts that rising food prices and decades-high inflation are here to stay, and notes that manufacturers are panicking as commodity, energy, and transportation costs go up. He argues that the incoming price hikes and supply chain shortages are going to be exacerbated by the rising cost of diesel fuel, which is necessary for farming and transportation. Earlier this month, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink said that food prices are rising faster than oil prices, and the grocery chain owner voiced similar concerns on Tuesday on Mornings with Maria. You need optimism from the White House point of view to the American people because everything that's been done lately has hurt the American people and helped the rest of the world, Katsimatidis stressed. There's a problem in food prices that could happen as interest rates go up, as there will be shortages of certain products. The supermarket owner is also the CEO of the United Refining Company, and in a separate report, he warned that even though gas prices nationwide have dropped more than 52 cents since reaching a record high on June 14th, fuel inflation's worst is yet to come. The diesel crisis in the U.S. may get worse, with the potential of shortages and rationing on the East Coast, the refinery and fuel station owner alerted. I wouldn't be surprised to see diesel being rationed on the East Coast, Katsimatidis said. Right now, inventories are low, and we may see a shortage in the coming months. There's a lag between oil and food prices as they go up, the billionaire businessman explained. There's always a maybe 90-day lag in food, a 30-day lag in prices at the gas station from crude oil, he continued, stressing that neither food nor oil prices have hit their peaks just yet. Katsimatidis isn't the only one sharing worrying forecasts about the near future. In an expose published by Bloomberg, one industry insider alerted that purchasing limits at grocery stores may start to be reintroduced soon. Due to a poor growing season, which has impacted corn and potato harvest, causing some production challenges and leading manufacturers to prioritize high selling items. Several products that contain these basic ingredients may be in short supply in the coming year, and supermarkets will have to adapt accordingly. I don't want to downplay risks at this stage. There are some risks for suppliers of frozen vegetables, potato chips, and other snacks, he said. The problem is we've had constant issues with potatoes now for the last 12 months, so there's not really been a stage where there's been a surplus in the system, the source revealed. Consequently, there is a fair chance supermarkets will need to impose buying restrictions. I think it's going to happen. I mean, we may have to go to the customers and limit them to two or three packs of frozen vegetables, he added. Meanwhile, with many of us preparing to adjust to this new reality of purchasing limits, product stockouts, and more expensive prices, we might have to temporarily say goodbye to some of our favorite brands. The maker of Oreo cookies and Ritz crackers, Mondelez International, announced that their prices will be increasing by as much as 6 to 7 percent starting next month. Similarly, the Campbell's Soup Company, General Mills, has also revealed plans to raise prices in early 2023. But one of the most alarming outlooks for the next year was shared by Kraft Heinz CEO Miguel Patricio. In an interview with CNN Business, Patricio said higher inflation and supply issues are expected to continue coursing through the food industry, forcing companies to adopt new strategies for everything from production 
to promotion to packaging. And he doesn't see an end to either issue anytime soon. We've already increased the prices that we were expecting this year, but I'm predicting that next year, inflation will continue. And as a consequence, we will have other rounds of price increases, he said. In the second quarter, Kraft Heinz raised its prices overall by 12.4 percentage points compared to the year earlier period. It has been very hard, the CEO admitted. This has been hard for the entire industry. It's a constant fight to try to minimize price increases, Patricio said. Part of that fight is that new disruptions arise on a daily basis. Every day we have a new problem. It's the new normal, he exposed. At the beginning, we thought it was a crisis. Now we know it's a new normal and we have to adapt to that. Every day there's a shortage of something, Patricio said. It doesn't help that with the global warming that the crops are not being good. So there's lack of tomatoes in the world, lack of potatoes in the world, lack of beans in the world. The CEO warned that around the world and in the United States, people will have to get used to higher food prices due to across-the-board inflation fueled by slower food production. Connor Hake, head of research at the agricultural commodities firm EDNF Man, explained that whether it's corn, sugar, coffee, soybeans, palm oil, you name it, all of these basic food commodities have been rising. Poor harvests in Brazil, which is one of the world's biggest agricultural exporters, drought in Russia, reduced planting in the US, and stockpiling in China have combined with more expensive fertilizer, more expensive energy, and more expensive shipping costs to push prices up, Hake remained. All of these problems could go longer than anybody could have imagined. Experts like Dr. Robert Handfield, a professor of supply chain management at North Carolina State University, say it's likely not to get better until 2024. Overall, there are a lot of bottlenecks at different points in the supply chain, Hanfield says. As I said, you have high transportation costs, you have higher labor and material costs too. Hanfield is adamant that manufacturers and retailers are doing all they can. It's going to be shaky into 2023, the expert said. Unfortunately, it's a bouncing ball. It's really hard to predict and analyze this because everything continues to change. When you think you've figured one thing out, something else happens, so it's tough. Shoppers are already having to adapt to all this too. One week it's one thing, one week it's another, said Tamikia Williams, who was also shopping at the food line in Southeast Raleigh during an interview with USA Today. She couldn't find the kind of hamburger meat she wanted in the past few weeks. You just gotta compromise and substitute, she said. That's all you can do. It seems like many compromises will have to be made in the months ahead. Just days before a new year begins, more and more distressing news is popping up everywhere. Unfortunately, this means that the hardships we've been facing up until this point are just the beginning. At this point, we can only hope that food production rebounds in 2023 so our system can be restored and supplies can be replenished to meet the growing consumer demand. The time to make preparations to get ahead of this developing crisis is now. So stockpile while you can, because as the experts have laid out, conditions are about to get harsher for everyone. We hope you found this video informative and thank you very much for watching. We hope to have you here for the next one.